Aromatherapy treatment bed layout is the same as Swedish massage, so if you can refer to our Swedish back massage tutorial, that will give you the correct layout. For aromatherapy, you have to be careful because oils are very potent, so unless you're clinically trained, stick to pre-blended oils. If you are using any aromatherapy massage oils, you want to ask the person that's had the massage to not bathe or shower for about 8 hours to allow the best results. If you are using your own oils and you are clinically trained, then make sure that you have them in a nice secure box that lets no sunlight in. And you also have to make sure that they're in the correct type of glass bottles. If they're in a clear glass bottle, then the oils will ruin. So normally it's green, brown or blue. What we also use is a little mixing cup. And if it's your pre-blended oils, you can just pour them straight in. And if you're mixing up your own, then what you can do is pop enough drops in for the client and then mix them with your carrier oil and today we're using grapeseed. So aromatherapy front of the leg massage. Um, same as before, you're just taking your time and you're gently applying the aromatherapy oil. Like every other part, you don't want to saturate it with oil but you need to have enough that you've got good slip and slide. So take your time when you're quite happy that you've covered the area. Just start to do some gentle effleurage just to make sure you get a nice even coverage. And then in a walk stance, you can start at the edge of the foot and just work up past the knee, cross your hands over and straight up to the top of the thigh. And again, about three to six times is enough just to warm up the area and prepare for other moves. You can do some extra effleurage at the top of the thigh where you gently work over and you work underneath and again, what you're doing here is stimulating the circulation, but you're also encouraging that oil to move into as much of the skin as you can to get those full benefits. You can also do butterfly kneading here, which is quite nice, so it's a very gentle scoop. And if you are going to do this, then just work in strips. So start in the centre, work down to just above the knee, and then slide back up and just work slightly further out. And you normally do this in about two to three strips. You can also do some stroking, and this is in a stride stance, and just stroke from the inside of the thigh. Work your way up and just work to the outer edge. And if you want to, you can do just some very gentle palmer kneading and just take your time and again just work in the strips to make sure you've covered the area. Once you've done that just some effleurage again and then you can do some prayer movement effleurage around the knee and what you can also do is just slide your hands to the side of the knee and then slide your hands back up again sliding back over. Just don't put any pressure directly on the popliteal, on the knee bone and on the patella because it's not very comfortable if there's a lot of pressure on that so keep it nice and light. But you can also do some thumb circles and thumb frictions just around the knee and again two or three times for that and then once you've done that you can actually just do some thumb pressures just down the two lower leg bones, the tibia and the fibula. And these pressures feel quite nice and they can release quite a lot of tension. Um, you can then do some quite brisk moves just on the lower leg just to warm up that area. And then when you're finished, back to your full leg effleurage. And once you're quite happy that the majority of the oil is soaked in, slide back down to the foot support with one hand and use your thinner muscle just to do some really nice gentle kneading just on the underside of the foot and then just slide off at the toes cover the leg and repeat on the other side right, so when we do our aromatherapy massage we start with the back of the leg and I've got my aromatherapy oil in my cup here and what we do is we just very gently start to gently sort of 
sweep it onto the leg, nice gentle stroking movements. And aromatherapy massage isn't as stimulating and as deep a massage as your Swedish and your deep pressure and your lymphatic, but it still needs to be a firm enough pressure that we can encourage the oils to sink into the skin and get the benefits for the next eight to 12 hours. So once you're happy that you've got enough massage oil onto the skin, you can start to do some gentle stroking effleurage movements just to make sure that you've got good coverage. You still want to be quite a firm, deep pressure, but there's going to be no hacking, no cupping, no things like that. It's going to be nice and light, and by the end of each massage section, you pretty much want to see that there's not any residue sitting on the skin. So some basic effleurage for the back of the leg is just moving your hands up to popliteal and then skimming over and moving right up to the top of the leg. Nice, slow, deep pressure. At this point, your client will still be awake because you're just starting the treatment, so you can ask them if the pressure's okay for them and either go a little bit deeper or ease off. Other movements that we can do here is some thumb kneading around the Achilles just to loosen off any tension there and relax. And we can also do some kneading with the thumbs with the thinner muscle, just up the gastrocnemius. And this loosens off any tension that you can carry if you're on your feet a lot or you do a lot of exercise. You can also support the ankle and just drain with one hand and then swap over. And you can also just do a draining move with your thumbs directly over the gastrocnemius muscle and then just slide back and relax. And you can do all these moves about three to six times. Also a really nice way to encourage the oils to sink into the skin is just to use three fingers and just very gently stroke all the way up the leg and again just skim over the node at the back of the knee just slide back down As with all your moves, the slower the better because it encourages the relaxation, helps your client to relax and it is helping that oil to sink in. You can also change to a walk stance and just slide your palms directly up the outside of the leg from the ankle up to the top of the thigh. And this is really nice and warm in this move too. And then when you're finished, you can go back to your original effleurage. And then just slide down, use both hands, down to the foot, and then just some kneading with your thinner muscle just over the base of the foot, and it can warm it up and relax it. And it's a nice way just to finish the massage. When you're done, cover over the area with your towel and move on to the other leg. So to do some aromatherapy massage on the back, we do the same as we did for the leg and just very gently apply the massage medium, just take your time. What you don't want to do is saturate the skin, but obviously you want to have enough on that you're getting the benefits of the oils that you're treating the skin with. So once we're quite happy that we've got enough massage medium on, we can place our cup down. Very gentle strokes just to cover the area. And remember to expose right down to the base of the back too. And one of the first moves that we can do is actually a spinal stretch, very gently just using your forearms just to stretch out the area. And this just helps you to assess if there's any tightness 
sometimes you can even feel the muscle knots as you're doing this and it's also quite a nice feeling for the client it really does stretch everything out and start the relaxation process so we can start with some reverse effleurage where you start at the neck and you work down the spine along the base of the back and pull back up to the shoulders When you're quite happy that you've warmed up the skin that way, keep contact and move back round. You can also do effleurage where you start at the base of the back and you can cross over your hands and cross back. And it's just quite a nice variation on the different types of effleurage moves that you can do. Other movements are double handed figure of eight where you're very gently working over the upper back, the scapula. You're changing your stance and working over the base of the back. Change your stance again, work over the opposite sides. And then do your figure of eight in your back where you started. So that's a really nice move, helps to get the oils sinking into the skin. You can also do some scooping at the neck, where you can work on either side. And if you see your erythema and you see the redness coming into the surface of the skin, you know that you're doing some good work here and you're bringing the nutrients to the surface. You can also scoop the neck itself can do some kneading, especially on the scapula area where you get a lot of muscle knots and nodules and you can also do thumb frictions and thumb kneading just to see if you can find any knots that you can work out yourself. And we can see some erythema here so we know that we're stimulating the circulation so that's good. We can do some finger pressures down the spine. These are sometimes called piggybacks and you're just working down either side of the spine and you're just pushing in and releasing and that's helping to loosen any tension. And what you would do is work your way all the way down to the bottom of the spine. When you've done moves like that, you can then use your thumbs to very gently release any lymphatic waste and encourage it to the nearest node and you do that to either side. But remember, it's either side of the spine and it's not on the spine. And if your clients get any conditions where this would be uncomfortable or could worsen a condition, then just leave it out. We can also do lots of different moves, such as thumb frictions and thumb kneading down at the base of the back. This is really good for loosening off any tension if anyone gets a sore lower back. And again, the slower the better. And you'd normally do this in three strips. And each time you just slide the thumbs back. And then when you've done this kneading your three times and you've worked all the way out, you can then repeat the move but actually slide out so you're encouraging the removing of toxins again. You can also squeeze the tissues and you're squeezing and just working towards the nearest lymph node which here is the auxiliary and it feels relaxing but it's also doing a really good job here at the same time too so what you would do is work in your strips and you would work down to possibly about here and then when you're finished you would then repeat over the same area and just drain and once you've done one side you maintain contact, walk round to the other side of the bed and repeat on the opposite side. And after that you can do some fanning movements, which is just soothing but also relaxing that area and helping to encourage circulation and removal of waste. And again, do one side, maintain contact, walk round and then do the other. Other movements that you can do are just simple stroking and just keep it nice and light. Take your time, just move all over the back. 
nice light pressure. You don't want it to be too ticklish that the client can't enjoy it. So slower than this. Obviously this is just the demo, but nice and slow. Take your time. Don't forget to work over the shoulders. And then when you're finished, you can go back to your original effleurage. Again, about three to six times on that. And then you pull off at the base of the back. Bring your towel back up. Keep the client nice and warm. And if there's any excess oil that you think maybe a little bit more than you were hoping for, then just a very gentle rub here and that'll just absorb the excess. And then you can hold on to towels turn your client round and do the front of the body. So aromatherapy, abdominal massage is quite quick but it can be really effective. So again check with your client, do your full consultation first and make sure they don't have any ailments that would prevent you working on the abdomen but for a lot of people if they've got IBS, if they've got various conditions that affect the stomach it can actually be really beneficial. So a tiny bit of massage medium on and just some diamond effleurage just to warm up the area and relax and again you're just hooking in under the ribs and pulling back over the hip bones. You would do that about three to six times. You can also do gentle stroking just working from the outside in just into the central area and just repeat on both sides. You can also do little palpations where you're working just over the colon, you're just working in the correct direction which is ascending, transverse and descending and it helps just to get peristalsis to get everything moving along. And you can also do the same sort of style but kneading and just gentle circles and just gently work your way along there, just take your time. And a really nice move here is just actually some gentle thumb stroking at the solar plexus. If someone's quite stressed or they really need relaxed, just about 8 to 12 strokes of the solar plexus can actually help to release tension and just really relax the client. Sometimes you can even just see them instantly relax and take a deep breath. And then once you're finished and you're quite happy that the oil's sunk in, you can either stroke to finish or do a final diamond effleurage to finish and then just cover the stomach and you can move on to your next area. So aromatherapy arm massage, just take your time and gently apply your massage medium onto the arm. And again enough that you can easily do the moves but not so much that you feel you can't get a good grip and you're sliding. So once you're happy with that, pop down the oil cup and then just make sure that you've covered the area nice and evenly. And then what you can do is just place the client's hand in yours and very gently effleurage on the outer side of the arm and just take it up to the shoulder. And you can be quite firm with your pressure here. Once you've done that about three or six times, just swap over and then the other hand just comes up and then works just up to the auxiliary nodes. So what you do is you start from the base of the hand and then just turn your hand slightly once you get to the supratrochlear node which is just at the elbow bend. And then once you've done that you can just use both hands and they both work in the direction that they were working to. Slide back down and then you can hold the hand in yours and gently repeat that move. And just take your time. But what you can also do is just support the hand on your hip or your stomach and just do alternate thumb frictions just till you get to the elbow bend and then slide. And again three or six times for that and then rest the hand on the bed and just do very gentle thumb circles on the palm area and you can even work it up just to the fingers nice and relaxing for anyone that does a lot of manual work or the type a lot and then when you're
you're finished you can do finger circles and then just gently release from the tips of the fingers and if your client's cold you can just pop their hand under the towels and then move on to the other hand. So aromatherapy massage for the face and scalp. I prefer to actually put the oil on my hands first because it's quite off-putting if someone saturates your face and your scalp with too much oil. So place it on your hands, start off on the shoulders and the chest and that's where most of the oil is going to go so that you'll still have residue that you can place on the face and it'll have the effect that you need it to but it won't be overly greasy because you've got to bear in mind that your client may be going somewhere after the treatment or they may be using the bus or the train home so you really don't want to have them absolutely covered in oil. So to start off this massage, work your way down from the temples and then just a little bit of pressure on the clavicle area and then move along to the shoulders and again just push down a little bit of pressure and then you can move along and just push down on the shoulders and what that helps to do is release any tension that you carry in that area and as you're doing this you may see erythema which means that you're boosting the circulation and you're bringing the blood to the surface so on the face you can do very gentle thumb movements, just little strokes, just in between the eyebrows and then nice gentle pressures working your way out to the temples and you can work in rows and in between each row just do a few strokes in between the eyebrows, very relaxing. So what you would do here is work your way in about three or four strips over the entire forehead then you can do the same but work your way from the eyebrows up to the hairline. And again you would cover the full area. You can also do pressures to help increase lymphatic drainage if anyone gets any sinus congestion. The oils that you choose can benefit but also some pressure point massage can help to reiterate that and really help to move things along. So work from the sides of the nose to the temples, gentle pressures, and then slide along and that will help to release any congestion. You can also do the same just on the jawline, finger pressures working from the middle of the chin just to the edge of the jaw under the ears and then slide. You can also do finger circles around the eyes. You can either do two at the same time or you can support the face at one side while one hand works. You can do very gentle pinching of the eyebrows and you can also do gentle stroking where you take your time from the centre of the forehead and you just very gently work to one side and then you would work all the way back to the other side. You can also stroke the entire face and what you're helping to do is cover the area with your aromatherapy oils to get your effects but it's also very relaxing and very toning for the muscles. When you're finished you can do a prayer movement over the face and then you can do finger pressures with a gentle pressure at the temples and just push in slightly and then some very nice light ear massage also feels really good and helps to relax. And you can also hold your hands over the ears and it traps in a little bit of heat and it feels really nice and relaxing. We can also do very gentle finger frictions and finger circles on the scalp. And what to do is just take your time and remember it's only the tiny amount of residue on your fingers 
it's got the oil on, that's all you need, you don't have to soak the hair in oil. So you can move your fingers about, but make sure that the pressures are quite static and it's the scalp that you're moving and you're not just moving about in the hair, you want to make it really effective. And you can also move down and do the same moves just at the very base of the neck, feel for the occipital bone. You can also very gently turn the head to the side and that will expose this area here that you can do your finger circles on. And then very gently move the head and repeat on the other side. And again, just take your time and make sure you cover the full area. When you're finished, move the head back to centre and then one final prayer movement to finish little finger circles and a gentle pressure in at the temples and release. And then once your client's finished you can set them up, get them a glass of water and give them the correct aftercare and home care advice.